Good day and welcome to the first lecture on funding brought to you today by Wilson and Roberts .com. and um, my name is Doyle Roberts I will be your presenter for the day and today what I will be talking to you about is raising capital for your business this basically will be an introductory lecture on how to go about finding funding for your business no matter where your business may be at whether you're just at the startup stage of, uh, of your company whether you are in your second or third round of funding or whether you're at your mezzanine round or whether you're just moving into a private placement memorandum or looking at going into an IPO but the whole issue today is we're going to discuss funding many of you um, would see individuals come up on the radar in the media especially and you'd hear them raising ten million dollars here you would hear them raising fifty million dollars there but a lot of us in the general world don't have a clue how these individuals go about raising money to begin with uh, the average individual only knows about going to their local community uh, commercial bank and asking for a loan and, and basically that is the extent of the capital raising experience of the average business person. Well what we're gonna look at today is four main areas of funding that you as a business person can enter into or look at. Um, the four main areas in particular would be those of loans, uh, the second would be those of grants, the third would be venture capital funding and the last would be angel investor funding I feel that these four general areas would basically cover the lion's share of, of what you would need as, as a business person to move through the stages of funding your business um, what I've found is, is in dealing with clients and in dealing with, with, with companies in the past is a lot of persons don't really realize how much capital they need to fund their business idea or to fund their business. Um, when I say that, um, most persons think that you need millions and millions of dollars right out of the gate. But when you look at about, when you look at the, uh, say, the, a lot of the Fortune 500 or the Inc. 500 um, companies, well, you'll find that 41% of their CEOs launched their business ideas with $50,000 or less. And what you find is e even more so, a third of that number, a third of that 41% uh, started their business with less than 25000 Now, what we're going to talk about is, is funding levels ranging from the 25000 all the way up to the $100 million level of fundraising for any business and no matter where your business may fall in the spectrum or the scale of this you would be able to know exactly the introductory steps that have to be taken for you to get funding for your business um, the first thing that you need to question is is how much funding does your company or business idea really need many of us we we do not like to count the cost in business um, when I say we don't like to count the cost we we would just throw a figure out there wildly without really looking at uh, financial projections or we would not look at uh, the financial forecast within our company's business plan and our strategic business plan within our company. Um, the bottom line is no matter how much you, your company needs, whether it's 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 uh, or a million, uh, those funding amounts can be found out there in the general world. Um, what, what we're going to teach you in this introductory lesson is, is a few uh, proven tactic, techniques to raise capital no matter what level you're at. Uh, many of you when you think about capital uh, most of you automatically run to thinking about venture capital um, and as an advisor, as, as, as a consultant and, and as, as a businessman I normally tell individuals uh, the venture capital financing method um, is not to be considered the end all be all of them all because what you find is venture capital firms like banks uh, they would supply you with the funds necessary to operate your business but they do it differently than the traditional commercial banks 
whereas banks themselves are, are creditors uh, and they just expect you to just pay back the money that you borrowed. Venture capital firms in particular are owners. They're, they're looking for equity. They, they want to hold stock in your company. Um, in, terms, in terms of looking at your company, um, while banks uh, may, may concentrate on your cash flow, uh, venture capital firms would invest in, for the long-term capital. Um, what we find is commonplace with venture capital firms is um, they look for, for the investments to basically appreciate uh, three to five times within five to seven years of their initial investment. Uh, the main difference between banks and venture capital firms is how they go about evaluating uh, a business looking for funds. Here it is, what we find is banks look at, at the immediate future but are heavily influenced by the past performance. Uh, venture capitalists on the other hand, they look in the long run future. Um, they basically, they, they want to know, here it is, um, they want to know what the future results and the future analysis is going to bring about. And um, they're mainly interested in, in the same factors as, as those that influence general bankers, but in, in the analysis of, of the applications from smaller companies. But what we find is all financial people want to know the results and the ratios of past operations, the amount and the intended use of the needed funds that you come into them for. And they're looking at what your earnings and financial condition of future projections are going to look like. And based on these, these will determine whether or not they're going to do business with you, whether they're going to partner with you, whether they're going to invest with you. Here it is. One of the major differences what I found with venture capital firms in comparison to uh, standard commercial banks is they, they look more closely at, at, at the product or the service and the size of the market that you're entering into, into in comparison to, to banks. Uh, if we want to break it down even a little more, um, when you go to a bank, um, a bank is basically a creditor. Um, they're interested in the product and the market position of the company only for really for the assurance that this product or service is going to provide the right amount of sales and generate enough uh, cash flow to repay the loan. Uh, <laughs> the, what we find is uh, they look at projections to be certain that owners and managers have done their homework within that business. Um, the venture capitalists, on the other hand, they're, they're, they're owners. They, 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 they want to hold stock. Uh, they they, they want to add, you know, in holding stock, they're, they're adding their invested capital to the, that company's equity base. Um, you know, so they examine the existing and planned products or services and the potential markets for them with extreme care. Uh, what you'll find is, is the process is a little bit more taxing when dealing with venture capital firms than in dealing with, with general commercial banks. Um, but one of the main differences what I've encountered is, is that venture capital firms, um, in looking at their, 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 they don't realize capital gains on all of the investments. Sometimes they lose in terms of the investments. Um, uh, and they don't always make uh, the capital gains of say 300 to 500% in, except in very limited portions of their total investments. But their overall intent is to find projects um, with appreciation potential to make up for investments that aren't successful within their portfolios. Um, what, what, what I find is uh, venture capitalists are a little more risky, uh, more risk takers, I should say, than bankers. Um, they basically, they, 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 they're always looking down the road. Uh, uh, that is one of the reasons why they, they set such uh, rigorous, rigorous policies um, in, in terms of the projects, uh, proposal size, and, and the maturity of the company and the management of that company. And there has to be something that stands out, something special, so to speak, uh, that stands out about that particular venture. Um, in terms of the evaluation procedures, uh, their, their bottom line is they want to reduce as much risk to their investment capital as possible. So you as, as someone either looking to get funding or you as somebody uh, looking to, to, to uh, 
move to the next stage. These are certain things that you want to keep, uh, you want to be mindful about. Um, if you decide to take the route of venture capital funding, uh, what you what you're going to have to basically is, is is ask yourself is 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 it a realistic option for you and your company in terms of where you are right now? Um, most uh, entrepreneurs um, who go behind venture capital, um, I would say 99% don't qualify, and and they w end up wasting a lot of time because the process normally takes between six months to a year when you're dealing with venture capitalists and and in terms of the time frame to get to uh, where you sign off on the term sheets and all of that stuff, you know, it could be time consuming. And, and if it is not a successful venture, you don't want to waste time on that when you could be putting a lot more time into, into uh, increasing your, your, your sales flows uh, and your profit margins within your business. Um, when you're considering uh, venture capital, um, uh, it can become distracting uh, and very complex in terms of, uh, of, of a lot of the tasks that you'll have to deal with and, and you'll have to to basically change your, your mindset from being that business person to being more of a marketing person because you'll be selling your company, you'll be selling the vision of your company and the vision of, 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 of your project. Um, you know. Uh, Another thing is 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 what you're gonna find is if you can get one venture capitalist on your team, uh, on your on your project, or involved in your your business, what you'll find is is that um, you know the old Adam uh, the the old adage that uh, venture capitalists uh, they behave like sheep. Once you get one on board it automatically causes everybody to start looking at you and a lot of persons start to come on board and that, that is why it is so good to ensure that you have a strong team uh, for the average entrepreneur just starting out um, there is they, they, you know a lot of rookie entrepreneurs uh, they, 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 they realize that they have to expose their ideas uh, to total strangers but um, you gotta realize that you got to be able to tell as an entrepreneur that uh, what is what is his genuine interest in your project or is this person just trying to get uh, intellectual property ideas out of you to do other projects uh, so there, there has to be some care taken when doing you know do, doing business with individuals due diligence has to be a major issue and I would I would strongly recommend that you do not talk to individuals that you know that you haven't really done any solid or firm due diligence on um, in terms of the negotiations when you begin negotiating with venture capitalists uh, you know the bottom line is there's gonna be an exchange uh, they want equity in your company and you want their cash um, you know uh, venture capitalists uh, you know they're not gonna be you know, and they're not just going to give millions of dollars to to any and everybody. They are going they they are going to feel you out just as much as you want to feel them out. You see, um, and the thing about it is, you got to make sure that the the firm that you do business with is is an ideal fit for you, because it 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 is somewhat silly. I would even go so far as to say, it 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 is somewhat uh, uh, nonsensical to 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 take money from somebody. Who becomes in essence your partner and it is not a, a congruous thing it, it, it is it is a very you know it could create a hostile work environment you know um, a lot of times to what we what we find is is in moving on um, the question that, that a lot of entrepreneurs need to ask themselves is, is do you really need a bank to get capital do you need a bank to get the money your business needs and in a lot of instances and in a lot of uh, uh, situations and scenarios, you don't really need, you know, banks, um, the, the the traditional commercial banks. Um, why I say this? Uh, to give you a working example, um, there was a company back in the '90s. Uh, it was called Netforce Technologies. Uh, it was started by a gentleman by the name of Tommy Wald, I think, and 
they were basically trying to get a traditional loan uh, from their bank, but the, 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 the parameters that, and, and the stipulations within the, the contract of, of the loan was such, it was so limiting, it would have hurt that, that particular uh, computer company uh, in the early stages of its development. And what we found is, is they, in essence, were able to make a different deal via uh, accounts receivable financing. Um, and what they did is they went to uh, Merrill Lynch, and Merrill Lynch gave them a better option to the degree that Merrill Lynch even added a clause that they would even, you know, put their lien, in uh, any liens on, on, on outstanding monies uh, loaned to the company they would put them in a secondary position when it comes time to the company entering into its second and third uh, rounds of funding. So this here was, was, a, was a classic example of, 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 of individuals who were in business, who, who were looking to do um, business and get monies to, to, to take their, their brand to the next level. Uh, what, what, I, what I found in the past is, is a lot of... Um, commercial uh, commercial banks they're not really geared towards entrepreneurs you see they're, they're not really geared towards entrepreneurs um, a few other um, what I would call non-bank alternatives um, would be um, for instance uh, investment houses or large financing institutions and uh, credit card companies uh, these are just a few of the, of the examples of, of, of alternative uh, non-bank sources of raising capital. Uh, in looking at the investment houses, um, uh, for instance, uh, you know, you got companies like Merrill Lynch that I made reference to earlier. Uh, they make loans and extend credit lines. Uh, uh, for instance, the financing deals that they offer start at $100,000. And uh, basically, you need, in terms to qualify for them, you need about three years of operations to qualify for them. Um, you can check their website out. Uh, that is uh, businesscenter.ml.com if you're interested in that sort of scenario. Uh, you got other companies like, uh, for instance, uh, Solomon Smith Barney. Um, you know, uh, they're available. Uh, they deal with securities-based lending. Uh, you can borrow up to 65% of the amount of your equity securities uh, at a very reasonable uh, rate that is typically below prime. Um, what we're looking at now is um, the uh, because the securities that are used for collateral are held through the same entity uh, that's granting you the loan. <laughs> uh, approval normally takes uh, only a few days uh, to complete. Uh, you can take a look at what they're offering in terms of their credit lines. Uh, you can take a look at their website, uh, SolomonSmithBarney.com. Uh, yeah, you can see what they're offering there. There are also other companies out there that come under another heading that when I made reference earlier to the large financing institutions. An example of this uh, large financing institution would be uh, companies like GE Capital, for instance. Uh, they tend to target businesses with less than $20 million in revenues. And to be eligible for their loans and their lease products, uh, uh, you usually need to have been in business for about two years. You can check them out at gecapital.com. Uh, if, if it's an IT-related purchase uh, you're looking to finance, uh, another option may be the IBM, uh, Global Financing Unit. Um, you can find them at ibm.com right slash financing. You can find them at uh, ibm.com uh, right slash financing and um, they tend to uh, they, they have offerings that include accounts receivable financing inventory financing and cash flow blend uh, cash flow based lending and, and term loans as well uh, the last example that I made too in terms of uh, alternative non-bank financing is the credit card companies uh, you got everybody out there like American Express in particular who uh, would give more than uh, who would give uh, um, who, who basically gives loans, uh, you know, according to the SBA. Uh, but if microloans are too small uh, to be used in your business, then you might want to check out uh, credit lines that they offer um, uh, for their cardholders. 
but there's and you can check them out at americanexpress.com uh, right slash small business uh, they have uh, started awarding uh, credit lines as high as four hundred thousand dollars now so that is another option for starting out your business in terms of funding um, you know uh, like I said there are a lot of options you know in in, in terms of choosing the right funding source that 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 you would need for your your your, your business what I found is, is is in dealing with with so many persons who are looking for for capital on a daily basis is is I try to to steer them into as many different uh, uh, sources of capital that is available out there for them uh, with the intention of trying to make their business uh, a, a, a steady stream of, of, of consistent progress and growth uh, going back to the four main forms uh, we looked at uh, loans grants venture capital and angel investors um, if we want to go you know in that particular order again uh, what we find is the loans are you know loans are basically straight debt finance um, uh, you have to pay them back uh, with interest within a certain allotted time and it can be a drain on the cash flow of your business especially a developing business um, I would normally tell individuals, you know, if, if it's a small business, yes, you can do the loan thing. But, you know, uh, if you're looking to generate or push your business to the next level, I, I would usually recommend, you know, going uh, behind angel investor funding or, or, or grants, you know, um, or along that lines. You see, uh, when we look at grants now, um, what we find is... Uh, whether they're public or private, uh, these are funds that don't have to be paid back. But in terms of the dissemination of the funds, they are uh, monitored and regulated to make sure that you know the monies are being used for what they they were requested to be used for. Um, for persons just starting out in business and, and and someone who has a business which is already established, these are these are both these are these are sources that are good for for both of you. Um, the grant path, what you find is, is you have to be sure about the type of grants that you would have available to you. Uh, you don't want to waste time just as in dealing with venture capital firms. You want to make sure that there's a, a good match in terms of who you, 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 you're going to be applying to. You don't want to, you know, approach the wrong uh, foundations or, or, or sources and then find that you're wasting time. Um, the third source would be uh, the venture capital. They're, they're, they're usually aimed at, at, at financing uh, new ideas and projects uh, that, that, that needs a, a, a hefty or sizable amount of funds. Um, but the bottom line why I tend to tell a lot of individuals to avoid venture capital is because they have to give up a piece us and, and I consider it a sizable piece of their business in order to get the money um, most individuals come to me in the initial phase and they say well I'm willing to give up more than half of the business and when it comes crunch time and they start looking at the numbers and they look at the amount of work that they're going to be doing in a business where, not, where they don't have controlling equity then they begin to realize that hey maybe this venture capital thing isn't the right path for me but by that time you're already locked in with with, with, with contracts and covenants and you know uh, you know it's a business venture capitalists they want to ensure that they get the best results and they're gonna put their foot down um, angel investors on the other hand in comparison um, I would uh, me personally I feel that this is the best source of, of, of funding in in the early stage of any company or idea uh, because what you find is you're not only just getting money in exchange for equity uh, participation in your company. What you're getting in an angel is you're getting an individual who, who has nine times out of ten, they have historical experience in that particular industry uh, because most angels don't invest in areas that they're not familiar with. Uh, so they're, you know, you you find that the angel investors they tend to be more hands-on um, so what you have come to the table is a lot of intellectual property a lot of intellectual experience and and property uh, 
that you couldn't pay for in, 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 in certain instances. Now, the next area I want to look at is, is some of the pitfalls that you want to avoid when raising capital. And what, what person don't realize is it's easy to raise capital, but you got to realize that there are some obstacles that you need to be able to avoid in order to get to the place of comfort. Um, whether you're, you know, uh, you know, whether whether you're raising angel funding or whether you're raising venture capital funding or just go into your local bank, you know, there are some things you you want to be able to avoid. And what you'll find is once you've learned the process of raising funding, it becomes easier and easier every time. And and as as you move from company to company or business to business and raising capital. What you're going to find is, is, is the experience becomes uh, very pleasurable, you know, with the ease of interaction and becoming familiar with uh, persons within your business network that deal with funding in particular. Um, the most important rule in, 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 in for raising capital is um, you shouldn't raise capital unless you absolutely have to. Here it is. You know, you, you, you don't want to place your company in, 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 in any form of debt or imbalance uh, that is going to cost you in, in not just the short run or the long run, but can cost your company, period. Um, so ensure that you are at a place where either this, this, this funding round is, is, has been agreed on by your board of directors, and this funding round is, is one that has 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 a detrimental ebb and flow within your company, so to speak, and you really need this funding round to take place. Um, the next pitfall that I would suggest is is try not to really raise capital. Try to self fund your business. Uh, you know, uh, do it the traditional way: the bootstrapping. You know, uh, going the credit card routes. Uh, um, finding customers that can purchase your products and services in advance and things of that nature. Um, this involves you to be, you know, more flexible in terms of your business funding. Um, the other pitfall that, 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 that um, you, you, you want to be mindful of is, is that you should, um, you should use the, 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 the friends and family around and, and, the v, I call it the Visa and the MasterCard round first and foremost. Um, these have been successful ways in the past and I'm quite sure they will be successful for you as, as, as a newbie to the in industry. Uh, the next point that you should be mindful of is, is, is even though angel investors can add a lot of value to your company and they bring intelligent you know, intellectual capital to the company, you know, um, and you have to basically place them in, in a in a place of strategic importance. Uh, you, you know, offer them a seat on the board of directors, uh, so that they can assume some temporary uh, senior management role. Uh, if if you can put together such a strong team, raising funding or raising capital from stage to stage becomes even easier, because what you find is 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 that venture capitalists, angel investors. Uh, banks, uh, private equity firms, they all, they all look at your team, you see. Um, and what you're going to find is, is, is it is easier to deal with, 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 with outside uh, personalities that have to deal with your company if you have a strong team that is giving you grounded advice, you see. Um, because when you're going to negotiate and, and do business with venture capitalists in, in, in particular, you know, there are, there are risks. And, you know, some would say that there are really no upsides in dealing with, with, with venture capitalists. But I, I have to differ. If you have a project uh, that is very scalable and, and you know for a bona fide fact that you're going to be getting the type of numbers that will justify, you know, that type of money uh, flowing into your company from an outside source, then I would I would suggest that you go forward with it. Um, but the the thing is, make sure that uh, you realize the venture capitalists they don't really deal with young companies. Uh, they prefer dealing you know with companies that have two to four years 
experience in the game, uh, skin in the game, so to speak. Uh, you know, uh, don't don't ever allow yourself as as a business person to become so desperate that you just simply you're desperate to take money in exchange for anything uh, within your company, and then you wake up uh, one day and realize, boy, um, we lost a, a significant margin within our company and it didn't have to be this way um, this is one of the reasons why me personally I recommend a very strong uh, business plan you see uh, if you have your funding rounds allotted for within your business plan what you'll find is 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 it is somewhat rather difficult for you to lose uh, your, your your positioning or you, how should I say you it, it, it's difficult for you to to lose um, your, 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 your strategic mindset in terms of where you want your company to be at different points in time in your company's development um, in terms of the business plan itself uh, some of the things that you should be mindful of that you should include in any business plan because um, don't fool yourself as a business you can't get funding unless you have a working legitimate business plan that has you know legitimate financial forecasts with with legitimate history and, and things of this nature uh, for example the first thing that you need to include in your business plan is is a very strong executive summary this would be basically the first uh, three to four pages uh, of your business plan and it basically summarizes or gives a synopsis of what is in this entire plan and basically uh, what you will find is most investors uh, when they when they're looking at, at your company and they're looking at your business plan is they're really looking at the executive summary and your financial forecasts and projections for those upcoming five years and this is reason this is the reason why your executive summary is so important and what you'll find too is in a lot of cases a lot of firms they don't really want to see your business plan they would tell you just simply send them uh, your executive summary and your financial forecast and based on that they'll determine if hey should we move to the second stage of communication with these business persons and based on that alone you know that makes a strong impact and if your introduction to these investors is, is is strong what you'll find is you won't become a statistic why I say you won't become a statistic is because the reality is the average uh, angel investor gets anywhere between 150 to 250 uh, funding inquiries every week uh, the venture capital firms is even more um, so your your business idea has to stand out and if your business idea can't stand out within the first if it can't stand out within the first two to three pages to make them want to see where this is going to make them salivate at the mouth because of the amount of profits they know they're gonna make through investing with you then you know you need to take a, a re-examination of your, your your business plan um, another thing that I, I, I would strongly suggest to you is is a lot of persons out there when they when they go to investors uh, they would go to investor A and investor A would basically say they don't they didn't like this and they didn't like that about the business plan and they would instantly you know the entrepreneur would instantly want to go and change the business plan then here it is they make that change and they go to investor B investor B wanted it to be set in the format that investor A was soundly against what I'm trying to say is is once you and your board of directors have come to a come together and agreed you know and you're in agreement with your 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 your, your accountants you're in agreement with your legal advisors and you say this is the plan these are the real numbers there's no exaggeration on these numbers uh, these can work well then this is the thing for you to do go forward with what you have um, in terms in terms of the other issue with with you with you with your with your business plan um, you you 
your, your business plan has to be seen as, as a major marketing tool. And what you, what you find is, in essence, you're marketing your, your, your company. Um, you're marketing your idea. You're marketing your vision. So your vision has to be so clear, so concise, that me sitting in my, my, my office or sitting on the beach uh, 3,000 miles away from you reading your business plan, um, I should be able to see clearly exactly what it is you are looking to accomplish and I should be able to see clearly exactly the direction that you're heading in. Um, the thing about it is, it's all about a numbers game. You see, uh, when I say it's all about a numbers game, when whenever you approach financial sourcing, whether it's through fax, direct mail, email, uh, website postings, whatever the case is, um, be prepared basically to see uh, positive returns. Uh, I would say anywhere between one and three percent um, versus in terms of your overall output. Um, I would say in 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 terms of of of, of casual inquiries, I would say five to seven serious conversations are going to happen on every ten to twenty casual inquiry. Um, basically what you're going to find is you're going to get one to three funding offer sheets uh, and these 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 are the things that you're going to have to negotiate so basically if 100 companies are approached one to three percent of them are going to give you the type of answers and the response that you want and basically I would say one to three funding offer sheets would be sent your way um, in terms of the other issues that you need to be mindful of when it comes to your business plan, uh, be truthful, be honest. Uh, don't try and oh, don't try and over exaggerate uh, what is happening with your venture in your business plan. Don't try and underestimate. Um, you got to be mindful that angel investors, venture capitalists, these are these are learned business persons themselves, and. A lot of the times, especially with angel investors, uh, they've been in business and, you know, uh, they, they know exactly what you're up against. You know, the, the, the business paradigm, the business model might be a little different, but the reality is one that they have already been there. Um, why I say that is, is when you're sharing your, your business proposals and your, your, your business plans with, with, with potential or future investors um, you got to give them the good the bad and the ugly a lot of times you know a person only want to show the good you know and and here it is you 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 got to re realize that these individuals that you're dealing with or talking with are learned individuals who are tapped into information networks um, so you want to avoid unethical behavior you know you you you, you want to avoid conflicts of interest um, you want to avoid uh, delaying submission of your financial statements <laughs> you 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 want to avoid you know uh, just basically doing silly things yeah you know for instance if you've gotten funding from from private investors in particular you know and you 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 don't want to get this money and say this money is for for purpose A, and then you end up spending this money on purpose B. Uh, you don't want to basically go to these individuals saying that you're going to them for business funding, and you end up using the monies for private uh, uh, upkeep and and things of that nature. It is not a good, you know, uh, it's not good. Uh, another thing that I would strongly suggest is is um, you want to be forthright. You want to disclose anything that may be damaging to your business or that may affect uh, your, 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 your cash flows. Uh, any situation that can be damaging to the investment, you know, that you know that they're going to eventually discover on their own, I, I would strongly suggest you be forthright. Uh, honesty is key in dealing with your investors. Um, you know, the, think about it like this. If you were the one who is going to give a million dollars to a business? Wouldn't you want to know all of the bases, all all, all of the f the facts surrounding this thing? 
wouldn't you want to 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 have your 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 pulse your hand on the very pulse of this thing you know uh most of you say you know uh yes you would and here it is we have to just simply see that these are individuals who want the exact same things that you want you know for those of you who feel that uh being honest with your your future investors is, is not a good thing that it can come back to bite you i would say i have to thoroughly disagree with you on that particular point in being honest with your investors what you're going to find is is you know you will get a better fit you see you will when i say you will get a better fit you will be dealing with an individual you know um who 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 you can be forthright with in in a comfortable context uh it will avoid any future business strains and things of that nature um another thing that you want to want to be clear with in dealing with your 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 financiers and 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 your investors in particular is is you know talk about the key driving forces within your industry um you know uh whether it's for a loan or funding you know you got to explain the risk that your business uh, is is facing in the industry that you're in you 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 want to share the 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 the, the the issues of labor regulations impact changing interest rates uh consumer spending fluctuations in currency you want to talk about the cyclicality the seasonality the suppliers or buyers the entry or exit costs you want to talk about the technology factor the competition and the international considerations if it is applicable to your business paradigm um <clears throat> excuse me the thing is you 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 have to be able to clearly define what the risk in your business is and what you're facing in putting your proposal together and in terms of in terms of just not only addressing what the risk is you know in terms of your swot analysis you know um you have to be able to clearly show that whatever risk are out there what you have to show that you have, you have taken you know whatever mitigating actions uh that need to be done to ensure you know stability within your within your particular field um whether it's perceived risk or actual risk uh you must have strategic uh plans in place uh to ensure that all risk are minimized and to ensure that the maximum profit is 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 gone um you know when we look at things like the EBIT DA uh, the earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization for those of you guys that are who don't know what I'm talking about um you know these are the things that that are going to be looked at um what you're going to find is is you have to take a number of distinct steps before you sit down with a lender or an investor you see um why is it for instance uh, step 1 you you want to identify the significant uh i would say changes whether especially negative changes in your financial financial statements um like i said earlier the the investor is is, is more interested in your financials than anything else you know he he needs to know any changes that would have taken place internally or externally within your business model um you know you step 2 you want to explain what is causing the changes you know provide you got to provide your investors with reasonable and complete explanations whether it's trends or uh, changes you identified uh whether it's weather <laughs> whether whatever it is you see um step 3 is you, in terms of getting the money that you want you want to ensure that uh you want to react to ensure that the negative impact of your company's financial health is reduced or eliminated altogether uh step 4 you want to demonstrate to the lending uh institution or the investor uh the steps you've taken to improve the situation and the results of your actions have produced in overcoming whatever obstacles are out there uh The thing is you have to become familiar with the funding environment that you're in. For instance, if it is a bank loan, you got to you got to come, you got to make yourself uh familiar with the bank covenants. 
if it, if if you're going behind venture capital, you have to become familiar with 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 uh, with, with with term sheets. Uh, if if you're going after uh, private placement funding, you you have to become familiar with the SEC 504, 505, and 506 rules of raising capital. All of these things you have to basically learn the business environment uh, that you'll be operating in. Um, you don't you don't you don't want to basically go half prepared. You don't want to go out there dealing with these angel investors and, and other individu individuals without getting into their minds, so to speak. And, and, you know, when I speak about getting into the mind of the investor or getting into the mind of a lender or private individual, uh, you got to realize that the average investor is, is looking for good cash flow to make this investment work. For instance, um, the banks want to know that they're going to get their money back. Investors, angel investors, they're looking to make anywhere between uh, 20 and 50% of returns on their investment. Um, what, what I've been finding is that a lot of angel investors are getting tougher. When I say getting tougher, to um, because individuals have begun to realize that uh, angel investors are out there spending money on uh, seed money uh, in businesses and things of that nature, um, they've had to start basically putting themselves into a realm where they look almost like uh, crazy venture capital firms. And what this has done is a lot of angels have come together and they've put together angel investor networks. and basically they've started basically investing via these vehicles um, if you look through our site you'll be able to uh, find uh, a copy of uh, all of the angel investor networks that are to be found within the US and within Europe I think that will be very helpful to any of you guys out there who are looking at doing that particular route of funding um, in terms of in terms of um, The good idea in, in dealing with with angel investors, uh, for instance, um, what you're going to find is is angels are now basically going higher up in terms of their funding level. There there used to be a gap. When I say funding level, what we find is is uh, angel investors would invest anywhere from ten thousand to a half a million dollars in any particular project. Uh, for projects that are, uh, say go up to about three million dollars, angel investors will start to basically team together. Uh, you know, uh, instead of each one coming up with the whole amount, you know, they'll come up with a portion and basically tag team the particular project, so to speak. Um, what we've also found is, 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 you know, through groups like, uh, for instance, Angel Capital Association dot org or the uh, National Venture Capital Association uh, that can be found at nvca.com. Uh, um, these, these groups have now made it even easier to find angel investors. Um, but what I've found is, is most angel investors, they prefer to be approached by persons who know them already. Um, when I talk about this particular type of scenario, um, is due to the fact that it, it boils down to credibility issues. It boils down to you know trying to basically sh streamline their their inquiry uh, funnel lines. Uh, they're, they're trying to basically ensure that they have access to the best opportunities. You see, um, and, and, and basically you know everything from filing fees have to now be paid with some groups. Uh, you see. Uh, <laughs> And basically, you know, it it has it has changed. Um, some groups uh, that I would recommend you looking at. Um, you have groups like the NewYorkAngels.com. You can find them there. You have the CommonAngels.com. Uh, you have uh, uh, you got the Angels Forum uh, that can be found at AngelsForum.com. Uh, you got uh, the Silicon Valley. Um, uh, uh, venture partners, uh, they're, I, they're being described as basically 
uh, angel venture capitalists. They can be found at uh, savp.com. That's uh, Silicon Alley Venture Partners. Um, you got other angel groups uh, out there like uh, the Washington uh, Dinner Club, uh, which can be found at WashingtonDinnerClub.com. Uh, you got the Kiretsu Forum. Uh, that's uh, K E I R E T S U Forum.com, all one word, Kiretsu Forum.com. Uh, you got um, uh, the groups out there. Um, you got the technology uh, tree dot com you got you got groups like the investor circle dot net all of these all of these are uh, all of these are companies that that not really companies they, all of these are networks sorry that you can access and if you're interested in getting uh, a full directory of, of, of other uh, networks I, I would tell you to take a look at uh, Wilson and Roberts dot com uh, they they have a good selection as well. Uh, they can break that down for you. Um, in terms of understanding how angel investors operate, um, even though they're changing how they used to operate, and um, they're looking what they're looking for right now is 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 companies that are strong and companies that have great exit strategies for them to get their monies out of those companies. Um, when you think about angel investors, you're thinking about somebody who's, you know, saintly. But this, <laughs> these are business persons, okay? So get that particular image out of your mind. Um, in terms of, you know, angels invest for the same reason as anybody else does. They're investing to make money. Um, in terms of who they are, they tend to be well-off individuals. Uh, uh, they tend to be uh, former company builders. Um, they're willing to put anywhere from ten thousand to half a million dollars into any promising startup company. Um, right now, uh, according to the University of New Hampshire uh, Center for Venture Research, uh, there were approximately uh, two hundred and twenty-five hundred thousand active angel investors in the U.S. alone. Um, in terms, in terms of um, identifying them uh, most persons tend to not realize what angels uh, look like or what they should look like um, because most angel investors tend to stay off the radar and and they they you know this allows them to, to pick and choose the, the sources for their deal flows um, when in, in looking at a the issue is is, is, is according to Jeffrey Soul uh, he's the director for the Center of Venture Research he said people find angel investors anyway, but it's getting harder and harder to find them, you know. And but that is good for business uh, because the harder they are to find, there's more money out there just waiting for you. Um, like I said earlier, they're forming groups, uh, and in these angel investor groups that they've begun forming, is, is you have anywhere between ten and maybe one hundred and fifty accredited investors uh, who are all looking at early stage uh, investing. Um, in 1996, for instance, there were there were about 10 angel groups in the U.S. Now there are more than 200, uh, uh, and, and according to upcoming statistics, uh, there are going to be more than a thousand by the end of 2012. Uh, the reason for this growth in, in angel investor groups uh, is because uh, the investors themselves they benefit from the group's organizational uh, structure. Uh, which can sift through hundreds of business plans and then select the few, you know, good quality ideas or entrepreneurs to present the opportunities to the group as a whole at regular meetings that these groups have. Um, in terms of the time frame that these uh, angel groups have their meetings, it's usually monthly. Um, uh, I would suggest to anybody who's raising funding or anybody is is to get in touch with a local group uh, don't don't if you're living in Florida it doesn't make and your business is gonna be in Florida it doesn't make any sense you approaching a group out in California you know start approaching the groups within your immediate uh, zone because what you'll find is a lot of angel investors they, they like to be I call it in striking distance of their project they want to know that hey they can jump on a plane if they have to in less than 30 minutes they're, they're at the site of that project 
and you can't really blame them for this you see um, the groups themselves are becoming more and more organized um, uh, if you want to take a look at it you can take a look at the Angel Capital Association uh, they they have been pushing for more organization which is a good thing um, in terms of what these groups have been looking for in recent times um, they were looking for high growth companies uh, basically that means uh, companies that are likely to grow at 30 to 40 percent annually and then either be bought or go public that, that is a major issue for angel investors they want to know either merger and acquisition is going to take place or you're going to go through with the IPO the initial public offering um, in terms of in in terms in terms of the model in terms of the angels wanting that 30 to 40 percent uh, return uh, what we find is is that not many companies can meet that criteria and that is one of the main reasons why a lot of companies uh, had difficulties qualifying uh, back in the 80s and the 90s um, what we find is a lot of angel investor groups are being bombarded so to speak with business plans and that is one of the reasons why I would suggest to the beginning funder to try and you know build business relationships with with individuals who are connected to these groups who can be door openers or uh, build relationships with the gatekeepers who can open up those gates and then basically have your 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 your, your business proposal uh, looked at reviewed and funded um, in terms in, in in terms of in terms of what the future holds for funding um, you got to be able to understand that angel investors are, are gonna because of the profit margins they've begun making through these uh, direct investments um, the groups can only get bigger um, and 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 because of the the perpetuation of, of, of investing jointly with other angels uh, to hedge their risk what you find is, is angels are now looking at projects that will basically the realm for venture capitalists and hedge funds and things of that nature to invest in uh, you see um, the last area that I, I want to look at uh, before I close out uh, this lecture is I want to look at um, SBA financing that is uh, small business administration uh, financing um, what a lot of folks don't know is the uh, Small Business Administration has a lot of programs uh, for some someone just starting out in business as well as for owners of established uh, companies um, and and basically they try to make the process of getting funding a whole lot easier than a lot of people realize um, let's look at some of the basics of, of what uh, an aspect SBA loan really basically covers. Um, it's a small business loan uh, made by a local bank that is in turn guaranteed uh, by the US Small Business Administration. If the borrower defaults on the loan, the SBA will reimburse the bank for a percentage of the loan loss. The existence of the SBA's guarantee is an inducement for the bank to make loans on terms it would otherwise not make available. Uh, what we have is a scenario where the SBA guarantee does not allow the bank to disregard standard commercial loan underwriting principles such as collateral and personal guarantees. It does allow the bank to loan more money, however, and extend longer terms and approve loans to less mature businesses than it otherwise would regularly give loans to. Um, what this has done is, is, is this has allowed you know more access to capital and this has created more jobs and it is expanding it is expanding the tax base of the average entrepreneur who takes this route uh, to be eligible for, to be eligible for an SBA loan a business uh, needs to uh, meet the size standard established by 
the industry type uh, published by the SBA. Uh, you can check with your local SBA lender uh, to determine your eligibility. Um, the reality is most businesses are eligible um, in terms of uh, in terms of the types of loans. Uh, not all SBA loans are for everyone, um, but it is very user friendly and as a financing mechanism. It, for a startup, it should be something that you know certain startups should consider. Um, most businesses find the banks uh, uh, closed to them if it was just them going, but through an, through requesting SBA loans, uh, you know, uh, the maximum SBA uh, guarantee to the bank is limited to seven hundred and fifty thousand. Now, SBA loan sizes can vary widely from five thousand to two million. You see, so you know this is this is why I would tell or I would suggest to many startups that this is probably an option. But you have to ensure that you have the cash flows to accommodate these loans. Uh, commercial mortgage loans for the purchase. Uh, okay, in terms of knowing the the most uh, popular SBA loans. Uh, programs that are available out there. Uh, you got uh, commercial loans, com commercial mortgage loans uh, for the purchase, new construction, or refinance of uh, commercial properties account for the largest volume of SBA loans. Um, the proper pr the property must be owner occupied first and foremost. Um, uh, in essence, your business must occupy at least fifty one percent of the space if it's an existing facility, or two thirds. If it's if it's new construction, uh, the balance of the space uh, can be leased to third uh, parties. Uh, this program is very popular, uh, and what I found is uh, the loan terms can be up to about twenty five years with no balloon provisions. Uh, what I've also found is is um, the amount financed can be as much as ninety percent and occasionally higher uh, versus seventy to seventy five percent on conventional basis loans. Uh, the loan can be assumed by an SBA eligible borrower. Uh, equipment term loans are available for the purchase or refinance of virtually any type of business equipment from printing presses to computers. Um, the amount financed depends upon the resale market for the equipment. Uh, the repayment term is, is matched to the depreciable life of the equipment, which can be as long as 10 years. Uh, most conventional bank loans are limited to 36 to 60 months. Um, next point of note uh, is that permanent capital term loans are more, uh, most popular with startup business, which include franchises. Uh, the proceeds can be used for general operating purposes or to carry accounts receivable and inventory during a high growth phase. Um, what we have is the loans are generous uh, with a seven year repayment term that is only available because of the SBA guarantee. Um, one of the newer products that I've encountered uh, from the SBA is the Green Line program. Um, what that provides is a short-term working capital line of, cap of, of credit. Uh, a credit limited is, is established from which the company can borrow, pay down, and reborrow. It is an asset-based line where availability is based upon a percentage of accounts receivable and or your inventory. Uh, this program is ideal uh, for government contractors and professional service firms. The term for the line of credit can be up to five years. Uh, most conventional uh, lines of credit are established on a demand basis or a one-year term. Uh, another uh, program uh, that has come forward out of the SBA is what they call the low dock program. Uh, this came about as, as, as an effort to try and make the whole loan program as user friendly as possible uh, for applicants. Um, under this program, the uh, participant, the participating bank, uh, does not have to submit all of the financial data to the SBA for analysis and review. Uh, rather, what we have is the borrower completes a one page application. Yes, I said it one page application, and the bank completes a one page analysis of the request. Uh, the SBA relies heavily on the bank's analysis and processes. These uh, loan quickly, usually within 48 hours, are completed. Um, 
what I found is all of the traditional SBA loans can be processed under this program as long as the amount is less than $100,000. Uh, so this is for the smaller types of loans that some of you startups might be interested in. Um, uh, where where can you get uh, an SBA loan? That is that is the primary question that many of you may have in mind. Uh, what you find is um, what the basically approved lending sources or ALS uh, are the sources. Uh, these comprise of the distribution system for SBA loans. Uh, not every ALS or not every approved lending source is the same and automatically will fit your needs uh, so you have to do your due diligence um, for example uh, the SBA green line is currently only available through threats to certain local banks approved for that purpose uh, when you're out there looking for that loan uh, make sure that um, you find a, an approved lending source that is familiar with your local or regional industry and uh, is willing to take the time to learn uh, choose an approved lending source that has an established track record in the SBA product which best matches your financial needs. Uh, once you choose the correct mix of capital and the best type for your business, uh, this is an important factor to evaluate. It has to be the correct mix of capital. Um, what else can I tell you about uh, the SBA loans? Um, you do not want to be the first SBA loan from an approved lending source. Uh, processing might take months. So uh, a preferable uh, ALS should be able to move even the most complex transactions through the process in three to four weeks. So you want to deal with the experienced approved lending sources uh, so you don't have to waste a lot of time. Um, there are basically three different types of SBA lenders. Uh, one an approved lender. Uh, this is one who that can that, that can make loan decisions without the SBA's approval. That's the first one, a preferred lender. The second one is a certified lender. Um, this is one who gets priority processing from the SBA. And the last is a general lender, uh, which is one that is licensed with commercial lending experience. So you got those three: the preferred lender, the certified lender, and the general lender. So. Um, I would strongly recommend that you deal with the preferred lenders if time is a factor. Uh, there are seven things that um, most persons will not tell you about raising capital. Um, and when I say they won't, won't tell you, um, here it is, just because your business idea and your expertise are great. Don't go into a startup business with people you don't already know and have faith in. Uh, here it is, relationships are hard enough to build when all of the components that lead to the relationship are stable, but getting together with a few people who have good ideas and try to create a business will usually leave at least one of the prospective owners resentful. Believing he or she was left out and at his or her lawyer's office, uh, the rule is with mergers, if the cultures, people don't necessarily fit or have interpersonal synergy, the excitement over the business deal or opportunity itself will not make it with this boy. The other thing that nobody will tell you about raising capital is never believe that real people will invest in an idea in any amount beyond $1 million with a business plan. Even if you believe that the plan is so obvious or that you are the greatest salesman or salesperson uh, on earth, you can't do it without a focused, concise document that makes the case why people should invest in you rather than put their money into the stock market for what has proven to be the almost guaranteed returns. For those of you out there who are traveling the venture capital route, be prepared for lots of rejection. I, I don't say this to sound cold or mean, I, you know, because this is just the reality. A lot of individuals, sadly well-meaning uh, individuals, are going to say some things to you about your business and your business that can be crushing, uh, critical, cynical, rude, and 
a host of other things, but here it is, successful private equity investors put up money for between every 100 and 250 deals they review on an average. That means there are a lot of would-be entrepreneurs being told no to. Um, another thing you need to be mindful of, don't confuse the fact that you have access with being finished or accomplished with your funding. Uh, here it is. There are a lot of folks out there in these different firms who will listen to you and listen to your business proposition. And, you know, they'll give you the, oh, that's all interesting. That is so good. But even the big private equity firms will listen to you, believe it or not. Whether you start up or not, they will listen to you. But here it is. Uh, <laughs> they'll show you that initial high enthusiasm and then they'll stall because if they don't know you and they don't have that faith in your ability and no one's there to vouch for you, it can become a tight situation. Here it is. No matter how much they hype you up and hype up your thing, until you see that term sheet in your hand for financing, everything else is just garbage. It's all about the term sheets. It's all about getting funded. Uh, here it is. Uh, another thing that I want to tell you is, is be mindful of, of, of self-style investment advisors and bankers uh, who will just about guarantee that you will uh, have no problem or trouble raising money, but who tell you uh, that you need to hire them and they will guarantee you that you're going to get funding. I can tell you something. This is foolishness. Even experienced investor finders who have been in the business for more than 30 years just focusing on funding businesses sometimes have a rough time now here it is based on who their main funding sources are will decide how effective they are at getting you funded so you do not want to deal with somebody who only knows one or two individuals in the industry the more persons your advisors or consultants have in the industry, the better your chances of getting funded. Here it is. It's going to cost you time and it's going to cost you money in funding. That's just how it is. You're going to have to pay to get documents put together. You're going to have to pay to send documents away. You're going to have to pay to have lawyers notarize different uh, documents. You're going to have to pay to cover all of the incorporations necessary. You're going to have to. You getting funded is not free. Here it is. How can you come to me and tell me, uh, Mr. Roberts, we want uh, $10 million in funding. And then you look at me and expect me to do it for free. That is absolute nonsense. I'm supposed to drop everything I'm doing because you have a vision, you have a business idea, you have a concept that you feel is going to work. But yet, you have not counted the fact that out of every thousand businesses that start, more than 90% don't find the successful route. Here it is. All I can tell you is be strong. You know, don't don't get too anxious in this funding thing. Um, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of serious money, and and the reality is is you have to be realistic. You know, uh, if you pay your advisors well, you pay your lawyers well, and so on and so forth. You invest to find as well. Your 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 you private placement agents well. You pay all of your all of your help well. You'll find that you will get the best results out there. You see, now, but don't think that you're going to get results without, you know, putting some skin in the game. That That is what it boils down to. There has to be some skin in the game. Okay. You're not going to get me to leave doing something that is going to put thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars in my pocket to just follow some dream. You know, uh, until it is in brick and mortar in, in, in the temporal business realm or until it, it, it is, it is, it is uh, 
generating money is via PayPal <laughs> in the in the cyber realm, then you know that that is why personally I prefer to deal with existing companies because they understand you know uh, what is really going on with funding. So here it is. I'm going to leave you with what is known in the industry as the Ten Commandments of Funding or the Ten Commandments of Raising Capital. And the first commandment is always be honest. Never lie, deceive, or attempt to fool any potential investor. Give them everything you promise or more. And guess what? The law enforced by the SEC and all those guys expect nothing less. The second commandment is choose your investors wisely. There's no way to know what kind of person may be interested in investing in your idea unless you get to know them intimately. Spend time with them to define exactly what they are looking for in an investment. The third commandment, choose investors who have the ability as well as the desire to invest in your ideas. If it's so hard to talk with someone who has different goals than you, find out what the, the potential investor wants in return for giving you the money you need. Also, do your due diligence, do your homework, and make sure they can actually follow through on the money commitment that they make. Sometimes you will find people who can't live up to their financial commitment. At that time, it's up to you to decide if you still want them in your project or if you should look elsewhere. The fourth commandment, choose investors who have demonstrated a history of investing in projects similar to yours. You want investors who are already comfortable with the types of things you are going to be doing. Convincing people who have never invested before to do so is a task that you don't want to undertake. If in this day and age, a person or group of people have not invested in a business before. You don't want to be the one who tries to convince him or her to do so. Trust me, I went that route in the 1990s. Hated it. Bad experience. <laughs> okay. The fifth commandment. Offer the exact terms your investor wants and is comfortable with. Do the research to find out what types of investments your prospect has made and how this will affect what he or she will be comfortable with in the future. Knowing what types of opportunities your money source wants to invest in makes asking the prospect much easier. The sixth commandment of raising capital is you have to make it easy for your investor to deal with you. Here it is. The fact that your investor is not familiar with you is where the problem is. If you aren't going to be available, which you need to be, 24-7 when you're in the funding rounds, believe it or not. If an investor cannot get in contact with you, they're not going to invest with you. Plain and simple. Make yourself available to the investors. The seventh commandment. Answer questions about your idea or business opportunity immediately. Do not make your investors wait weeks or months for your response. Answer all questions within 24 hours of receiving the questions from your investors. If you make me wait, I will not invest in you because the same way how you make me wait for answers is the way you're going to make me wait for profits and money is to be forwarded back to me for investing with you. The eighth commandment is demonstrate confidence in your idea or business opportunity. People will not invest with someone who does not show enthusiasm for what they are trying to do. So always, always prove to your source, your financiers, your investors that you are committed to seeing the project through. Energy, enthusiasm, zeal, passion, it has to be there. The ninth commandment, and I know you will all agree with me, get every single thing in writing. If it is not in writing, it does not exist. Giving someone a handshake or a gentleman's agreement, that might have been all good back in the time of our grandfathers and great-grandfathers. But the reality is, if it is not in writing now, in this 2012 and beyond, it does not exist. If it is not in writing, it does not exist. At some point, <laughs> your money source will put 
their financial commitment in writing. All commitments start with a contract. So don't be afraid to ask for your contract. Don't be afraid to ask for the money. The tenth and final commandment is keep it simple. Keep it fun. Funding is a process and it's supposed to be fun. Making money should be fun for everyone involved or else you're going to run into problems. The day making money or being in business isn't fun is the day you should be doing something else. That's just how it is. That is how it is. So here it is. Investors out there. Investors out there looking to give you money. So how are you going to find them? <laughs> if your idea is new, if it's risky, unproven, offbeat, whatever you want to call it, to get regular traditional financing, then when you don't, well, if that is the case, you don't have a choice but to go and attract angel investors and venture capitalists. Private investors have more money than ideas. They're depending on entrepreneurs to come forward with the ideas. Here it is, successful entrepreneurs, especially retired ones, are especially likely to be angel investors. You have to put yourself out there. In terms of where you're going to find these people, look amongst your business associates. You have a better chance of getting funding from the persons you worked with in the past and who you worked with on a regular basis, or acquaintances and associates on, and colleagues of persons you worked with in the past. Don't stop networking. Network, network, network. Join professional organizations, whether they're Toastmasters, Kiwanas, the Rotary. Network. That is the key. That is one of the fundamental keys to raising money. Because angel investors, venture capitalists, hang out in certain organizations. If you are in those places, you'll be positioned correctly. Start off local. Don't go outside of your geographic area to find investors. It's easier to find local investors than it is to find far off investors. Here it is. Look at the people who've been successful in your industry. Pitch your ideas to lawyers and accountants. They may be interested in your idea or they may know somebody who would be interested. They may have clients who frequently invest in new and growing businesses. So lawyers and accountants are a good source of angel investor sourcing. Here it is. In order to convince an angel or anyone else to, to give you funding, capital, uh, it takes a lot of time and hard work. Be sure to dedicate enough time and budget in your search for financing. Once you find a prospect, send a great contact letter and keep pushing forward in this regard. In the event that the prospective angel shows interest in your idea, make sure that you have prepared a well-researched, detailed business plan. I can't stress that enough to you. Make sure you have a well-researched, detailed business plan. Because that is what they're going to be looking at. Okay? Investors are, if investors are interested in, if, if the investor is interested in your plan, bring in your lawyer and accountant to the negotiations. I can't say this enough. If the investor is interested in your plan, in your business, in your idea, bring in your lawyer and accountant into the negotiations. Informal investors usually invest from 10000 to 100000 in each venture. While angels may be able to invest considerable capital in your venture without requiring the kind of documentation that other investors do, put your arrangement in writing to reduce misunderstandings. If it is not in writing, it does not exist. Angels prefer to make straight loans at rates comparable to banks or slightly higher rates. 
they generally they generally expect to lend their money from three to seven years with some guaranteed exit provision such as a mandatory buyout others may want to be repaid in stock if your company eventually goes public be sure to tailor the financial arrangements to fit your angels needs angels can also provide you not only just with money but guidance advice and a mentor relationship or an advisory investor is what we're talking about they are generally not interested in controlling the business but may require you to meet certain business goals or follow certain business practices if possible encourage your angel to become a member of your informal advisory board many angels like to keep a close eye on their money plus they can offer you invaluable advice if your angel is well connected in the local business community he or she may help you find additional investors introduce you to a banker or an attorney or bring in new customers an angel may also help you gain membership in a club or professional society that will benefit your business remember that every relationship is different the key to success in is doing everything you can to increase your angels comfort level so the person's investment and relationship with you and your business will be long-standing and profitable you have to give yourself the capital raising edge you need to put your ideas in the best possible financial light to make a good impression on your prospective money source so you have to take the time to get yourself ready for this process here it is this is a synopsis you know not all of these uh, are going to be necessary to secure funding especially for small amounts or for startup uh, companies but if you already have a business and are looking for capital to expand these following points these 10 things you need to do before you attempt to raise capital I'll say it again these are the 10 things that you need to do before you start raising capital the first thing is put your paperwork in order the second be prepared to show how you will use the money you receive the third get your business plan and income projections in shape fourth examine your financial statements fifth check your credit rating and fix any incorrect entries Six, incorporate your business if you have not done so already. Seven, register, register your business with Dun and Bradstreet. Get your registration number. Eight, make your applications impeccable. Nine, practice your presentation. And the last thing is ten, be patient. Let the money come to you if you have done the fault the aforementioned 10 things be patient everything is in order the money is gonna come when I say <laughs> you know what I really should break these 10 points down you know so as to so as as, as to to you know what I'll do, I'll save that for the other course when we dig even deeper into angel investors and things of that nature. But just to give you a quick rundown again of those 10 points that you need to have before you attempt to raise capital put your paperwork in order, be prepared to show how you will use the money you receive, get your business plan and income projections in shape, examine your financial statements check your credit rating and fix any incorrect entries incorporate your business register your business with Dun & Bradstreet make your applications impeccable practice your presentation and be patient ladies and gentlemen this has just been an introduction you know uh, to the world of funding and to the world of financing um, for some of you you would prefer to you know go the grant writing way which is good some of you will choose the venture capital some of you choose the angel investors some of you just choose the traditional commercial bank loan but whatever you decide to do whatever path you decide to follow just be persistent keep your nose to the grindstone and rest assured 
as day follows night, you will get the funding you desire. And if you need any help, uh, feel free to get in touch with the family down at wilsonandroberts.com and they'll be more than able to assist you in getting funding the way you want.